Hello and welcome to this module on methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and vancomycin resistant Enterococcus. Now these are three organisms of utmost importance for your boards and usually you should be able to spot at least one question related to one of these three organisms. So let's begin with methicillin resistant Staph aureus. Now, this is an important cause of severe nosocomial infection nowadays as well as community acquired infections. So, this is a bit of a bother now that it is spreading into the community and into the hospitals. Now, this MRSA uh, resistance is due to a mutation which forms what is called as the MECA gene or the MECA gene. And this occurs in a part of the Staphylococcus which is called as the Staphylococcal chromosomal cassette which is a mobile genetic element. Now we can detect the MECA gene by polymerase chain reaction which is the most diagnostic and most effective way of diagnosing it. And this mutation leads to an altered penicillin binding protein and this altered protein is called PBP2 which is resistant to penicillins as well as the beta lactams. MRSA can be diagnosed in the regular laboratory uh, if you don't have access to PCR by simply demonstrating resistance to oxacillin or cifoxetin. What you need to know here is you cannot use methicillin although it's called methicillin resistant staph aureus you cannot use methicillin because it is banned and it is banned because of its nephrotoxicity and the nephrotoxicity it causes is acute tubular necrosis and methicillin is no longer available so we cannot use it cross resistance is seen with cephalosporins which is why nowadays cefoxetin is used to diagnose MRSA now cefoxetin is a second generation cephalosporin and this is now found out to be more superior to oxacillin because it induces the formation of <coughs> MEC A more than oxacillin. The drug of choice for MRSA is vancomycin and the way you administer vancomycin is intravenously and why is that? It's because vancomycin is a glycopeptide drug which means it's a combination of a carbohydrate and a peptide chain and when we think of a peptide chain you should always remember that it is going to be a big long chain so the, the moment you say that this is a big chain it's got to be a very large molecule and just to give you some perspective it's more than around 1500 Daltons which is a very big sized molecule now because of its large size it cannot be absorbed if you give it orally and therefore it has to be given intravenously and just to give you another perspective for it to be absorbed orally you will have to have the size of the drug restricted to less than 200 Daltons so you can see that it's almost eight times larger than what the oral route can absorb however there is an exception in pseudomembranous colitis caused by Clostridium difficile you can use it orally and why is that because in this case we don't want the drug to be absorbed we want it to stay in the gut so that it can stay there and kill the bacterium while it is inside the lumen of the gut now the other thing that you need to know about pseudomembranous colitis is very often you get what is called as recurrent pseudomembranous colitis and in that circumstances you have to give the patient either phydaxomycin or rifaximin as the alternative to vancomycin. Now the other thing about vancomycin is again because of its large size and because of this it has a very narrow spectrum of activity. It does not work against gram negatives and that's because in the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria there are these small channels called porins and these porins allow certain molecules like water molecules and amino acids to pass 
but again the size of the porine molecules is very small it's around 600 dalton compared to the size of the 1500 daltons of vancomycin so it doesn't allow vancomycin to pass through so that leaves vancomycin with a very narrow spectrum of activity limited pretty much to gram positive cocci but the good thing is it is bactericidal vancomycin is bactericidal the other thing which is often asked is the mechanism of action now this blocks a part of the peptidoglycan layer of the bacterium and which part of the peptidoglycan it's called as the dalanil dalanin of the peptidoglycan you need to know this very well that's because there is a small mutation that takes place in vancomycin resistant staph aureus which is the next topic which we call as vrsa and here what happens is the dala dala as it is called it mutates to what is called as d-alanine d-lactate and you need to know this because this is extremely high yield now when you encounter vrsa the treatment of choice is linezolid so our next discussion will be about linezolid linezolid is bacteriostatic now the mechanism of action of linezolid is also very important because it inhibits what is called as protein synthesis protein synthesis as you know occurs inside the ribosome or the ribosomal rna it prevents it blocks the initiation of protein synthesis now in the 50s r rna there is a subunit called as the 23s r rna now this is what is blocked by linezolid and that is again a very high yield subject now <clears throat> we have seen resistance to methicillin we have seen resistance to vancomycin but resistance to linezolid is rare and the reasons are one it is synthetically manufactured so you don't expect any pre-existing resistance to be present secondly there are multiple copies of 23s so resistance to all variants is highly unlikely thirdly the the point of binding which is 23s is unique and so you don't pretty much expect cross resistance with other antibiotics now <clears throat> when we talk of um, staph aureus when we talk of methicillin vancomycin linezolid and a natural extension is for us to talk about enterococcus now the enterococci of clinical significance are enterococcus faecalis and enterococcus faecium the drug of choice for faecalis is ampicillin which means it is still susceptible to the penicillins however the other one namely e faecium enterococcus faecium is always almost resistant to penicillins so the drug of choice begins with vancomycin so you need to remember this difference faecalis versus faecium again because they will ask about this so what is vancomycin resistant enterococci we call the species as vancomycin resistant enterococci only when both of them are resistant to vancomycin and the drug of choice for vancomycin resistant enterococcus is linezolid however what happens is many times some doctors would prefer other drugs so you need to know these other drugs that are sometimes used to treat mrsa vancomycin resistant staph aureus and vancomycin resistant enterococcus so this is the list linezolid daptomycin ceftarolin now this is the fifth generation cephalosporin tigacycline and then you have the final resort which is called as the group of streptogramins which include a combination of dalfopristin plus quinupristin now these are synergistic drugs they have to be given together for it for them to act properly in a case of mrsa vrsa or vre thanks for watching this module